Hey, how? What else, Stephanie? Hey guys, I'm still in Thailand. Well, by the time you see this, I won't be, but I am, and it is the rainy season. It is seriously the rainy season. Um, which I, it actually, it's a rainy season in Shanghai too. It just feels more a rainy season because we're in a hotel room as opposed to an apartment. So it feels a little more cramped when it's absolutely pouring outside and I'm stuck in a, a tiny but wonderful hotel room. Anyway, point being, I have finished my first 64 rounds in my Lightner box. Yes, this is a flashcard video. <laughs> I know you've been waiting for another one, said no one ever. Okay, so basically, Lightner box, right? It's uh, seven different levels. I've jerry-rigged the first level, so it's a matching exercise, but it's still seven different levels. Um, and there's 64 days, 64 days. I imagine when they created this, and I still have a history video coming, I swear, but, um, or a background uh, video of the Lightner box. I, it's on the list, folks, it's on the list. Um, 64 days. I imagine they, the ideal version is doing 64 days in a row. I just have it on the back of an envelope because it was uh, more secure to, uh, sturdier to move around and play with and, and, and carry around than just a, a piece of paper that would get really dirty over the course of 64 days. I have by no means done it in 64 days. <laughs> I have quite different, quite, uh, quite done something very, very different. For example, let me sh let me tell you my t my information because I did a whole analysis of it on the plane five days ago and uh, haven't done the video yet. Whoopsie. <laughs> okay, so March, January, February, March. Yeah, March 21st is when I started. It's hard to believe it was that short a time ago, and it's hard to believe it was that long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I live in the world of contradictions. March 21st this year is when I started, and I finished on, it looks like July 5th, July 5th. So that's March to April, April to May, May to June, June to July, um, three and a half months, about three and a half months to do 64 days. Okay, the point was, I did an entire round of 64. Whoa! I feel pretty happy about that. It was pretty intimidating to see 64 day checklist, right? So, but I persevered. I, there were some days that I didn't do it and some, a lot of days that I did do it. So what, did, what else did I notice? Um, I counted the days in a row. Um, <clears throat> how many days in a row did I do it before breaking? And so I had five days, nine days, three days, one day, three days, two days, two days, nine days, one day, eight days. Yes, I'm going to read all of them. Two days, five days, six days, one day, three days. There isn't a consistent amount of time. I, wanted, I wondered if I followed this, if I did this analysis, would I find that it was most comfortable to do four days in a row? Was it more comfortable to do six days in a row? Did I tend to break after three days? The answer is no. There doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to this. So that's good to know. So when I have a day off, it's no big deal. When I have two days off, it's no big deal. When I do nine days in a row, Woohoo, but that's not gonna happen. Actually, that happened almost three times in 64 day, well, 64 task days, not necessarily 64 calendar days. <coughs> I'm not, I don't really have an emotional connection to it not being a consistent amount over and over. The main thing for me is to use this checklist of sorts uh, to do a manual time space repetition to do vocabulary review often. And does that seem to work for me? And the answer is yes. The fact that I started on March 21st and went to July 5th, and despite having stopped a number of times, I completed it on July 5th. And I'm now working on my second round of 64. So does this work for me right now? Yes. Undoubtedly. Does it work in a consistent way where I know I can schedule vocabulary days on this on, on these days and non-vocabulary days on this days? No. Am I comfortable with that? Why not? <laughs> the point is frequent, but frequent doesn't have to have the same number. That apparently is the lesson in this.
I also counted the most time off, like how much time did I need when I took a break? Two days, I'm gonna read all of them. Two days, two days, one day, six days, four days, two days, two, three, two, one, 11, one, two. Okay, so the first six days, that was after my HSK-1 test. The second, uh, the 11 days was after my HSK-2 test. Was it? Did I really take 11 days off? Yeah, I was pretty traumatized by that test. Despite having done really well, that really shook me. That's really weird. That's 11 days, geez. I don't feel so bad about my current hiatus. <laughs> I think I've missed three days right now while I'm in Thailand. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and so I've decided that medical is coming first for a week, and learning will have to commence when I get back to Shanghai. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so 11 days, that's amazing. So those, so the two biggest breaks were because of, uh, basically to let my brain rest after the test. I feel like that's fair. I'm not going to be taking that many tests, so, so be it. I came back. That's the most important thing, is I came back, and I kept using it, and I kept learning from it. And that's the biggest takeaway for me, is that even with breaks, like a six-day break could get you out of a habit, and yet I came back. An 11-day break is definitely, definitely long enough to break you of a habit, and yet I came back. I think because I could see by then how many times, because that's, that's almost at the end here. That's like, I think that's in the last column when I did that break. So I saw how much I had already done. And I think seeing that for me inspired me to keep going. Cause it's like, well, I've already, did I get sunburned today? Sorry, I just realized that when I went like this, my, uh, wow. Okay, there literally has been no sun today. It's been raining the entire day. This must be from yesterday. It was 92 degrees yesterday. What is that? 40? Is that 40? 41, 42 Celsius? Anyway, as I sit here and play with my sunburn, the point is that, I'm going to stop doing that, <laughs> that I came back because I saw how much work I put in and I wanted to keep going. So apparently I am checklist oriented. Are we shocked at this point from the other things that I've shown you? No, not really. But I didn't know a lot of that when I started this particular system in March. And with this and the other systems that I've put in place now, it makes those days of wondering if I'm learning anything, uh, it puts them into perspective. Because the point is, um, it doesn't matter if I'm learning anything. Oh, I saw something great today at the gym. I have a giant movement goal for um, the summer, right? It's not about... Um, it's not about language learning, but it is about uh, life and mental capacity. And if you are better, you um, you can think better. And so my movement goal is is part me part medically induced and part where is it where is it, where is it? here it is and and part uh, just overall mental health, physical health, that kind of thing. And so I'm, I've joined a gym for the, this is the first time I think I've joined a gym on a short vacation. I've done um, like yoga classes and things. I hate yoga so much, but it feels really good. <laughs> it's so slow. I get bored during yoga, guys. I seriously get bored. I think they should have yoga with some sort of mental exercise because just meditating, I can meditate, and I feel okay with that. But to do an exercise that's supposed to be meditative doesn't work for me. I need moving exercise. Does that make any sense? Anyway, so I'm at the gym in Chiang Mai, Thailand <laughs> on vacation, and I see their sign. I don't know if you can see it here. Oh, the glare is intense. Can you see it? I'll just read it to you. It says, you don't have to be good at it. You just have to do it. I love that. Look. You're not going to be good at it for a while anyway if you're starting something new. You are very, very likely to suck at something the entire time you do it. If you're anything like me, you like to try new things and you're not generally super talented at most of them. But what if they're fun? What if you enjoy them? What if you meet really cool people while you're doing them? Are you supposed to stop because you're not great at them? Oh, heck no. That's not how I live my life, apparently. 
So just do them anyway. I know that is kind, it seems like kind of a take on Nikes, just do it. But I love that they had that just as soon as you walk in the women's restroom, toilet, changing room, whatever you call it, as soon as you walk in, that's the first thing you see is that sign. And I think that's really inspiring. It's like, okay, yeah, perfection, yada, yada, yada. Just do it. Just, just go up, show up, and do the task. And I feel like this, when I first start, is like, okay, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And after the first column is done, after the second column is partway through, then I get to the point where I want to get to the end. Like, I want to enjoy the process, but I also want to achieve the goal the goal of getting to another round of 64 and the goal of practicing my language on a regular basis. And it's incredibly hypo hypocritical because right now I'm on a very unplanned uh, break from all language learning. I carry around my materials every day this, on this vacation because if I take them out of my bag then I feel really, really useless. But I'm not doing anything. I'm not listening to anything. I'm not even doing my flashcards. I don't have the mental capabilities to do that right now, and that's fine. Um, but for the other days that I was doing them, this was really, really inspirational. And I know because of this, this list, I know because of this, that once I get back to Shanghai and I get back in a pattern, I will get back on track. Because I was gone for 11 days after my HSK2 test, and I came back. So, yeah. I'm a checklist learner. Oh, wait, did I learn something else? Oh, okay, no, I just figured out, um, I just did a, a quick back of the envelope calculation, even though this is not an envelope, this is. Anyway, um, if I had start, I started March 21st, if, if I had done 64 days in a row, I would have finished on May 24th without skipping any days, but I actually finished on July 5th. I don't think that's particularly useful. Anyway, I think the useful bits are in um, how many days in a row I do them, and it, there's no consistency there. Um, and the second thing is how much time off I need in between, other than after major events like the test, or what's going to happen this week with uh, life events. Uh, other than those things, one day seems to be the bit, one day, two days. One, day's in, one and two are the biggest uh, breaks that I need, and that's really good. I think with taking short breaks like that, it, it refreshes me and it brings me back in a way that is helpful. Uh, I'm glad there weren't a lot of five days, six days on there, and I'm glad that I finished it, even though it was significantly after what it would have been had I done 64 days in a row. So um, I'm really liking the Lightner Box. If, um, if you're new to the channel, um, it's you can just look at the title because I'll inevitably have a, a title for Lightner Box. There are tons and tons and tons of videos on people showing you how to do the Lightner Box. I've done some, um, I do, I've done some massaging of my box, um, but I think in general it's a really, really useful tip. Um, it just, it just really is, and especially, especially the checklist that is the the thing if even if you do it well no because i mean the whole thing in lightner box is it's 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 manual physical box that you touch with physical flashcards and i definitely think this should be physical and not digital um, because there's something about crossing that off and writing the date i write the date next to it it's super hard to see I think, but you can see the dates here. So I cross it off and I write the date next to it. And that's how I knew how many days I was taking off and how many days in a row I was doing and all that kind of good stuff. So I cannot recommend it enough. If you are a checklist learner, if that is a phrase, it should be a phrase. If you are a checklist learner or a ch checklist task person, I cannot recommend this highly enough, especially when you are learning a language that is as intricate and as different uh, in its written form as uh, Mandarin Chinese is, whether it be simplified or traditional form. I think this is a really, really good way to get that vocabulary into your head so you can get to the good parts of the language. All right. Thank you very much. Satian.